My name is Donato and a very warm welcome to the inaugural video of the Running Shoe Channel. Yes, yes, that's right. And we had to start somewhere. So what better place to start than at the beginning? Um, so with my good friend Lawrence, who's the guy who gave me the last sort of push shove to get this channel started. So I thought, let's start with you, Lawrence. Yes, that's right, you. And uh, Lawrence has been running now for a little over two years and he ran his first marathon back in October last year. We ran an amazing time of under four hours. I think it was around three hours 52. I can't remember the exact minutes, Lawrence. Sorry, I haven't got the notes written down here. But uh, brilliant guy. And we're going to go through the format, which all you guys who are watching can join in as well. So email me at myrunguru at gmail.com if you want to join in. And it'll be this type of format. Nice, simple. And as I said with this strap line, you may see in the banner, it's by runners, with runners, for runners. So I'm going to go through the three things that we talk about Lawrence's shoes, which is what he's got. Yeah, he's probably got the lot. No, what he's got, how he came about getting his shoes and why he's chosen those shoes. So without further ado, let's go into our interview. Welcome, Lawrence, to our inaugural running, running shoe channel video. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Oh, hey, Donato. Can I put the shoe down now? You certainly can. You certainly can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just give a brief glimpse of the shoe. Um, it sounds uh, the the sound there. Do you want to talk again, Lawrence? The sound there sounds. Uh... Well, we're not coming through loud and clear. Oh, yes, you are coming through loud and clear. Sorry, we did do a sound check beforehand, but for some bizarre reason, when I started recording, the sound sounded very different. But no, you're coming through loud and clear. So as I say, Lawrence, welcome to the show. As I've said in the intro, apologies, I think I got your marathon time slightly wrong. What was your marathon time? Uh, that was 3.51, my one and only time. 3.51, yeah, not bad for your first marathon. You one and only, but who knows if we do another one. But not here, we're not here to talk about your, your running and everything. We're here to talk about your shoe. But obviously, people would like to know a little bit about your background in terms of your running experience, how you came about running. So uh, over to you, Lawrence, a bit of a background about yourself and running, how you got into running, when you got into running, why? Yeah, well, back so I drink my tea. Yeah. Back in 2017, you announced that um, you were going to run the New York Marathon. And uh, it's something, it's a place I'd always wanted to visit anyway. Um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly into marathons. Quite like watching marathons, you know, London Marathon, etc. on telly, but yeah. not something was my cup of tea or anything like that. Uh, but then, you know, I decided to come with you, or you agreed to let me come with you. Um, so uh, very excited about going to see New York City, obviously, like anybody would be. Because you wanted um, to do the photography, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and of course you, you I, I'm you know keen photographer, so I thought, well, here's a photo opportunity. I can uh, I can get some shots of you on the marathon. And I thought, well, rather than just get some shots of you in one particular location, I'd try and uh, get to one location and then get quickly over to another location uh, and take a whole load of second shots. Uh, so yeah. the first, I think, the first avenue, and then uh, running across to to Central Park. And of course, I wanted to get there before you'd run over the top. <laughs> so I thought, well, I better be sort of fleet of foot or, or, or at least a little bit fit. You need to so, be quick. Yeah. Yeah. So then I I, um, I went to uh, from where I lived then, there was a little wood. So I started running around the wood. And no, lo and behold, even even before we went to New York, I think that was around about August, even yeah. before we went to New York. I sort of found that I was able to run quick, gradually quicker and longer and quite enjoyed it. So by the time I went to New York, um, yeah, I, I was sort of beginning to get the bug. And I think I got a lot more out of the marathon because of that. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And you joined a, a local running club as well, didn't you? Yeah, that was in the, uh, that was the, the marathon was 2017 and 2017. I joined the club yeah. in spring of 2018. 2018. Um, in, in between times. I started to run park run. And, uh, right, right, yes. I realised very quickly that I needed help. <laughs> <laughs> you start watching. So I'm very grateful for you to come in on the, the show, Lawrence. And as yes. I said in my uh, introduction um, before we came on, is that uh, your part to blame for this channel. So I thought you can be my first guinea pig of uh, 
having you on the show so we can go through the format of what the particular show is about. So it's a bit ironic that um, I inadvertently got you into uh, running and you've sort of inadvertently got me into doing this uh, running uh, running shoe channel here. So uh, as the, the all the rivers join or whatever and all that kind of stuff. So the format is, is pretty straightforward. We spoke through this beforehand. And, and as I mentioned, um, anyone who comes on, it's pretty straightforward. It's the the what, how and why of the shoes. So what shoes do you have? How did you come about them? And why do you run in those particular shoes? So show us your shoe again. You did give us a brief, brief glimpse. Show us what the shoe that you have. Uh, this is the Nike Wilds 4, which is a trail shoe. Sorry, could you repeat uh, that, Lawrence? I think there was a bit of a break in the line. This is, that's the Nike Wild Horse 4. Wild Horse 4. Wow, it sounds like a proper stallion. Which is a trail shoe. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, it's pretty light. I mean, it is a running shoe. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it is, to me, it's a perfect compromise between uh, speed and comfort. Right. Which is what you want for your training. For, well, it's what suits me for training running. So what I've got is a Wild Horse 4, mm -hmm. um, which is a low, I guess... I think they're about, I think they retail for about 130. Yeah, um, yeah. Typically pick them up for around about 90 pounds. So right. they're sort of a, a, mid, a middle of the range price wise mm -hmm. um, shoe. So, you know, considerably better than cheap running shoe. Yeah, not, yeah. Not in, the, not in the league of the, you know, the top next percent type next stuff. Next percent or alpha fly. But uh, it looks it's, a proper solid trainer. And right. um, so that's so it it's the Nike Wild Horse 4. Yeah. It's, it sounds like some kind of game or something. I yeah. don't know that's the name for these uh, shoes. But that, as you say, that's geared as a, a trail running shoe. Yeah. We'll go on to the whys and wherefores. But how did you come about getting that shoe? Because it's not, for those who are watching, sometimes a lot of people go for, you know, fair road runners, which you are a road runner, aren't you, Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah. is that they would go for a road running shoe is how did you come about this particular shoe was well it was just cheap was it on a deal come on what's the story <laughs> Lawrence? i would like to say it was that it was because of you know spending many hours just discussing uh, what shoe to buy with uh, with, with expert <laughs> guidance and uh, uh youtube videos Watching hours and hours, and hours of youtube videos yeah yeah in fact i went to went to oxford street with me john clutching me john lewis vouchers yeah, and uh, vouchers, yeah. They had one pair left in John Lewis, uh, which happened to be my size, uh, which is size right. nine, I think. And uh, yeah, UK size nine, and they were half price, reduced from 130 to 65 quid. I looked, <laughs> I picked them up, and I thought, well, they're light. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're they're Nike, and uh, they're they're a good price, and I've got vouchers, so that's why I bought them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the reason wow. to go into the shop was that, apart from having the vouchers, was that um, <laughs> I, I joined a club by this point and uh, uh, sort of very naively and happily said, oh, it's great. I'm really enjoying this running and uh, I'm having a great time and um, I'm really pleased with my shoes. And what I was actually running in was uh, they were Nikes, but they were like 10 years old. Um, <laughs> and, a, and a couple of people just said, oh, my God, shoes! <laughs> they'll, they'll, you're, you're going to ruin your feet and you get some get some new running shoes now. So I thought, oh, OK, I better go and get some new running shoes. So um, not knowing any, any better, uh, I'd say I went and got some more Nikes. But no regrets. It's, these are actually my second pair. Yeah. And yeah. I've got what I've got here is the other shoe, the same the same side, the left hand right, shoe. Right, this right. is the original pair that I bought from John Lewis uh, wow. back in the uh, and I just noticed actually the wear on the soles is less than on the second pair, so I'm going to revert back to rotate back into these ones and run some more on them. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the second pair are now overtake. These pair are probably in about 300, and the second pair are probably in about 400 miles now. Right. Um, I was going to say it's miles, not kilometres. Yeah. So um, that's that's a good distance in it. There's hardly any wear on those. Uh, it's interesting no, what you're saying, Lawrence. Definitely. Your your club. Your club runners were telling you, what are you doing running in shoes that are 10 years old? You're going to ruin your feet and all that. Do you, yeah. do you sort of feel that maybe we're all being a bit brainwashed, that we've got to have the latest and the greatest shoes? Yeah, possibly. Because, I mean, even though those shoes were 10 years old, 
I'd pick them up as um, just as a, as, a, as a cheap pair of trainers, in effect. Yeah. On a, they were brand new to you. They were kind of, they were pretty new. They hadn't, they hadn't done many miles, yeah. um, maybe 100, 200 miles. Right. Um, okay. But I do, I understand that they do nevertheless break down over a period of time. So I didn't, I didn't mind. And I'm happy about it because the, the wild horse for a superb, absolutely yeah, superb yeah. shoe. Well, that, um, that would probably explain why I've not heard the name before. But um, yeah, it's not sort of top of the list of people. Um, in fact, if I do a trawl through now on the Nike uh, website, I'm sure there'll be other trail shoes at the usual price point. So, so the, how you came about was basically just a random trip into John Lewis. It was yeah. half price and you had some vouchers. So basically you yeah. got them for nearly yeah. for free. Um, yeah. And that's why you bought them. I but like the science bad. behind that, Lawrence. I didn't know what I was doing. But what no. I did know is I could see the, the materials are really good. It's really well made shoe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after hundreds of miles, you know, this, the cushioning all, all around the heel here, it's still yeah. got all its integrity. Yeah. And there's plenty of springs still in the in in the sole. Right. They're wide. Right. They're wide. I don't know really that comes across. Yeah, yeah. Wide, but they have the way the lacing is set is that you can make them very snug across the middle midfoot. Yeah. Um, so I find them extremely comfortable shoes to run. I quite happily run. Uh, uh, I never actually, I, I ran in my running shoes for the marathon. Yeah. Um, I'd quite happily run a marathon in these. In fact, I'd quite happily run an ultra in these if I was so inclined to do. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. You can um, just run and run and run in those. Yeah. You, you never, you, you know, I mean, you'll get tired running that distance, but it won't be because you're wearing these shoes. It's because we're not fit. The other thing I did in the second, <laughs> yeah. it just so happened uh, for anybody out there who's interested in trekking as well as running, as well as an excellent training shoe, they're in a superb trekking shoe. Yeah. So I it just so happened I bought the second pair just before I went with my son to Nepal last year. Right. Um, and uh, it was a two week break, including a five day fairly hardcore trek uh, in the in, in the uh, sort of in mid. In the level. Himalayas, yeah, at around to sort of, uh, not between nine and twelve thousand feet kind of altitude. Yeah, um, and they were absolutely superb. Uh, it, uh, they're not technically waterproof, but um, I walked through many a stream, and uh, you, although you could feel the coolness of the water, they didn't let the water in. Yeah, so yeah, uh, absolutely brilliant shoe. I mean, they, so they're they, proper hardcore. Because I was going to say that the third one is the why do you run in these and why why do you keep because you know, for a lot of people, yeah. they tend to chop and change different shoes and they see the latest and the greatest and want to go to a different pair. But you've stuck with that same pair. Whilst you accidentally came across them and they were cheap half price, you yeah. found them, you know, you've gone to the second pair again with those. Um, right. Well, why is it that a lot of your running is trails, grass type stuff off road when you do your training? Is that yeah. why you like these? Yeah. Yeah. They're in the sun in the summertime. Um, I try to, as much as possible, run on sandy paths and on grass. Yeah. Uh, give the old uh, knees and, and hips a bit of a break. Yeah. From the pan and they get running on the pavement. Mm -hmm. But these shoes are very good for the pavement because there's, there's, there's quite a lot of cushioning. Yeah. Um, but they, they didn't, I mean, I'm sure it comes. Yeah, uh, I can see, we can see clearly, yeah, the, tr the tread the, there. It's quite so a, you've been running on tarmac or asphalt with those and they still look pretty solid. Yeah, so th these are the the uh, there's a very grippy sole, so yeah. there's a fairly hard plastic in a bit, yeah. and then a more rubbery outer black layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gives you lateral grip. So the great thing about these shoes is you can you can run around bends basically with full confidence that you're not going to mm -hmm. fall over. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Running snow, ice, mud. Anything. I, I don't particularly like running in the mud in these. It makes a mess of them, but because with all the orange and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, they're all they're all weather, all terrain shoes. So absolutely perfect for training. They sound um, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely um, brilliant. So, and in terms of chopping and changing, I know people. You know, I'm not a particularly fashion fashion conscious kind of guy, although I do like the look of these shoes. I think they're quite smart shoes. Um, but when it comes to buying something new, and I'm sure you, you think the same, you think, well, what problem am I, am I solving? What's, what shortcomings are there with this uh, item that I'm looking for something better? 
And in terms of a trail shoe, a training shoe, there's no problem to solve. They're, they're, to me, they're as good as, as they can be. Yeah, Although I haven't yeah. played, there are Pegasus trail shoes. I would probably like to try a pair of those at some point. Yeah. Um, because those are your road running shoes, aren't they? We'll talk about the Pegasus another time. Yeah, um, but to be honest, the most likely next step in terms of a training shoe, uh, an, uh, an all-terrain, all-weather shoe, would be the Wild Horse 5, which is out now. Right, uh, right. When I eventually replace one pair of these, then that'll be yeah, what I'll replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, um, brilliant. Yeah. So the, the only thing I would say is they're not, they're not a race shoe. Yeah. But they're excellent. I mean, the key thing is everyone has different shoes for different reasons. And that's the, the beauty of this particular channel is we talk about different types of shoes. Well, that's the plan. And uh, and I'm sure we'll have you back on, Lawrence, talking about your peg um, road shoes and how, yeah. how good they are. But uh, And then if you have bought the, the peg trail, we can talk about the peg trail as well. But uh, but the key thing is you, they're comfortable and you feel great when you're tra training in them. And as you said, you could go out and probably run a marathon in them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I quite. I mean, I, I take. I've done many, many a sort of a 16, 18, 20 mile run in these in these yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah. And well, uh, it, <laughs> we all have issues when we run those sort of distances, especially when you're not used to it. Yeah, but yeah. it's not not the shoes. Well, with, with the shoes so far, you've clocked up uh, in those different pairs. You know, oh, 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 almost eight hundred miles in those. So I'd say that they're right. they're a cracking pair adding yeah. up the two different sets on there but um but yes Lawrence thank you so much for coming on our inaugural show how was that for you that was great I, I, I mean I could talk all day about the wild horse <laughs> they're a really brilliant shoe I mean I, I don't, don't don't get me wrong I'm, I'm not a, a Nike fanboy um yeah. you know the, these these the shoes have to stand their own merits yeah but yeah. Uh, they 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 got it right with this this shoe they yeah. certainly did yeah I think the uh, this will probably come through as we speak to more people is you find a shoe that works for you and you stick with it yeah would you say that's a good philosophy yeah definitely yeah yeah, yeah. excellent thank you so much for coming on the show lawrence and i look forward to seeing you soon somewhere but thank you all so much all for watching i'm sure you'll see me really soon <laughs> yes okay we'll say bye bye to all the viewers bye, -bye. bye. thanks a lot thank you all right Thank you so much for watching our very first uh, video. Yes, that's the inaugural interview here of the Wild Horse, the Nike Wild Horse 4 running shoe. I hope you've enjoyed this in some way. And it just goes to show you just don't know how you're going to find your new first running shoe. So I'd love to uh, hear, hear your thoughts and comments. Leave it in the comments below what you thought about this. Do you run in the Wild Horse? Do you use trail shoes? For your training runs and then road shoes when you actually do your race i'd love to hear your thoughts views on that but i found it fascinating speaking with lawrence and seeing his viewpoint and how he come about those and he finds them so comfortable and as we've said is if you find something that works stick with it we don't need to change and chop and change other things and i think lawrence succinctly pointed saying by me changing what am i going to benefit what am i going to add to by getting these new pair and if you don't add anything there's there's no point really looking at a different pair is there but anyway thank you so much for watching as i said if you want to take part in these types of interviews because this channel is all about it's by runners with runners which is with you guys and for runners like you me and everybody because i'm sure everybody wants to hear your story about your running shoe and shoes that we run in thank you so much please do get in touch myrunguru at gmail.com and let me know if you want to uh, take part in that. Look forward to hearing from you and seeing you at the next video. Let's go.